are told of Hades, whose reign as grim lord of the dead came to a sudden end when all at once his past caught up with him. But gods do not go quietly, and history repeats. So this tale was only a matter of time. Hello, I'm Noah Price, your Christian Gamer. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Hades 2, the amazing game that might be sinful because it has witchcraft in it. Yeah. I, among many others, were luckily enough to be able to get to play Hades 2 early. Now, this isn't because of early access, this is before early access. See, the team behind Hades actually put out a technical test, which I, I don't know, I've never seen any other game really do this, where they do a early access before early access. <laughs> They're planning on doing early access soon, but they put this out so that people can get their hands on it to see if there's, if it's playable so that they can put it into early access. So, while this isn't really meant to be like a spot where you can give feedback in a way of like storytelling or mechanics and like does it feel good it's more in a way put out so that players can get the hands on to make sure like hey does it work and luckily enough me among many others got to jump in and experience this game already and boy for a technical test not even early access this game is pretty refined <laughs> a lot of work has been put into this game already there's so much quality in this game i love the structure in that it's very much hades too it is a perfect sequel in a lot of rights of doing the the good balance of keeping what was from the previous game but also doing something new but while playing hades 2 in this technical test there was a major major red flag and i already kind of mentioned it witchcraft it's honestly something that I'm struggling with. I won't lie. I really am struggling with this. Now, to keep in mind, I am somebody who loved Hades 1. I really enjoyed this roguelike. I think it's the best roguelike when it comes to storytelling for roguelikes. Roguelikes are known for not really having a story. It's more focused on the gameplay than the, the story. But Hades did an amazing job of mixing the two in a way that feels very fluid, has a great balance, and it lets you keep playing the game without getting bored of one or the other. Again, I, I'm somebody who loved the game so much that I put out an hour and a half video charting my experience and journey through the game had a good time with that video so i'm somebody who loves hades and I, when i saw the trailer for hades 2 i was very excited i was a little cautious and worried i was like who is this lady going around witchcraft in my greek god mythology game but honestly, after after the trailer, I kind of like threw it off to the side. Again, I'm somebody who loves to jump into games blind. So I usually don't watch trailers. I try not to follow stuff. But Hades is such an amazing game and I love roguelikes. So I couldn't resist the opportunity to jump into this game and see what it had. And jumping in, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings. Now I'm in a spot to where honestly, I don't know whether I should play this game or not. You have new mechanics that's different with magic through the idea of witchcraft. So it's like it's such a portalizing thing where it's like the mechanic sides of it awesome the painting of it I am struggling with <laughs> Because you are a apprentice witch, you actually have Arcana cards, which also adds a new mechanic that is pretty fun to adding little modifiers to going into runs, kind of similar to the, the black mirror or the purple mirror that you used to deal with in the first game. So it's like a lot of these things are the same mechanics or similar mechanics from the first game, but painted over with witchcraft. And so it's one else where it's like, it's easy enough to being able to dissociate it with the witchcraft side because you're like, oh, I played the first game. That's just this painted over with witchcraft. Witchcraft. So it's like, it's not actually like witchcraft. It's like, it's just this mechanic. You can look at it as just a mechanic. And I think you could do that and still be fine, but it's still like, it's still in your face of like witchcraft. So there's a bunch of little elements of, of setting and stylized that I saw in the first, in this like section that has a lot of witchcraft. You have arcana cards, witchcraft. You have a cauldron, which you make stuff, witchcraft. You have spells and a magic gauge, witchcraft. And it's one of those things where it's like, I don't think while playing this that I am actually conducting witchcraft through playing this game. It does kind of one, normalize the whole actual reality of witchcraft and how that's against God and not good for you spiritually. It's just, it's spiritual junk that you're consuming. And honestly, it's just, it's just not the best for you.
Right now, ultimately, my verdict with it is that it's a game that I think you can play. You can de-associate the hexes and the witchcraft side of it, and you can still enjoy this game. As a Christian, you can still play this game and have a good time. Is it the best for you? No. If you really want to live a righteous life, really don't need to put the spiritual junk into your body. I'm still on the fence. I won't lie. I am on the fence of whether I should play this game or not. The reason why I'm still very interested in game one, the game is fun. Honestly, a big aspect that I like is the tone's different. The story Story they're telling is very different and i am very intrigued about it it's not like ah i'm a witch like that's not the story they're trying to tell they're trying to tell like rebellion and and fighting against chronos it's like very interesting stuff and i'm really excited to see what happens in the game i'm most likely still going to play this game i want to follow this game so when this game does come to early access Good chance we're going to be covering about this game a little bit more when we hear more about the story, a little bit more aspects. I just want to talk about how the witchcraft in this game and how that caught me off guard. At least if you're going to play the game as a Christian, it's good to have the association so that you're not just like, oh, witchcraft, oh, I'm doing witchcraft. The second part is also always keep in mind the reality of witchcraft that like, yeah, no, this is not something that's just whatever. You know, it's easy for people to even kind of like push away as like, ah, spirituality is not real. Like it, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And so it's like, you, you know, the Bible clearly talks about how it's a real thing and it's a real situation and how we have to be aware of it, be cautious of it and, you know, not live in fear because we have God on our side and, and you know, he's better than it. But, you know, still keep in mind that like witchcraft is real like that. That's a real thing. Not a good thing. Not at all. The test of moon glowing Malinui is at an end for now, but soon much more of what awaits her shall be told. Let me know down below what you think about Hades so far from what you've heard or maybe what you've looked into it. Let me know if you're thinking about playing the game or not. And let me know if there is anything you want to hear about me talking about this game. As always, I'm No Price Christian Gamer. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Jesus loves you. I love you guys. Shalom.